Okay, trying to throw together a little uh, video here about programming with an NCE system and using a program track and the way the manual is written and in the instructions so that you'll understand how to do it. This is very simple. For simple programming where you're not going to get into fancy things, for 99% of us, you don't you know you don't need to go into Dakota Pro you don't need to do any of these things particularly with mo most of the new engines that come with all the bells and whistles in them the uh, Dakota's pretty well programmed to where the headlights do all the fancy things without you doing anything to them uh, we talk periodically about a switch this first track right here is set up as a program track down at the end down there underneath the papers there's gaps and an isolation block when I throw this double pole double throw center off switch to program the one foot block at the end down here gets killed and there's a gap between live track a dead track and then the program track is live in this position if I put it here everything's dead that's just an off switch. If I put it here, all track is on the main. It's operating just as if it was part of the railroad. So a lot of people ask about that. Now, all those tracks in there are just for my convenience. This was going to be a yard for the ATSF interchange. And it's ended up as a parking lot for repairs. Okay, so it's the rip track. Let's go into programming an engine. This is relatively simple. You go down here to where it says program escape. And this button right here is the one I'm going to be pushing. And you go until you come up with use program track. Then you hit enter. Then I'm going to hit standard. I am not going to hit CV. One thing about this screen, you see one, two, three. Well, there's actually four, five, six, seven on here. Number seven is a complete reset. Uh, if it's an NCE decoder and you hit seven, it'll completely reset it to default. It'll ask you, do you want to reset it? And you say, you hit one, it'll do it. We're not going to do that tonight, but just let you know. In most cases, if you use that on another decoder, it'll get some of your CVs reset to default. Um, I'm trying to think. BLI, Broadway Limited, has, is set reset CV8 to 8 uh, and so forth. But again, that's that's just uh, off, just you know, answering questions that a lot of people try to have the need to reset the uh, decoders when they get screwed up and. Uh, you need to read into each decoder and see what it has to be done. If you're going to do an NCE decoder, though, all you have to go here is select number 7 and say yes, and then watch the little engine jump up and down, go back and forth, and you'll see it move and all the good stuff. Let's get back, though, to standard programming. So in this case, we're going to just push 1. Okay. Now, I also heard, I don't know if you heard the little chat there that was the brushes on the engine making noise this is not a sound decoder so this says manufacture 12 and I just happen to know that's an NC decoder in there and it says wait uh, it's a Dakota version 17 I think it's a little bit on the old side but we won't get into that either um, and then we're gonna say activate activated address long Set up address one. Yes, we're going to set up addresses. Okay, this one's done, but we're going to go through and do it again. Yes, one. Well, a short address. In my case, all my locomotives are set to loco three for the short address. Uh, I don't use short addresses, period. So you can play with that one any way you think that you want to, but in my case, I don't use short addresses. They're all three. So activate this address yes okay set up addresses and it says wait sometimes this takes a while depending on the type of decoder but it's in there doing its thing right now 
And I am not going to stop this until it's finished because I want you to get the sense of time on some of this that you may have to wait for. Okay. I could play a little background music. Ah, there we go. So, setup addresses, long address is 7360. So you would type in 7360 if that was the address of your engine. And you'd hit enter. Okay, activate this address. Yes. Now, here's the part where we got into a discussion, and the reason I'm making this tape is set configuration. If you're running DC, your locomotives exclusively on DCC and all of mine run on a long address, you have to go through this section. So you would answer one, you'd press the button one right here. And you say yes. Uh, directory bit enter normal. Uh, so I'll press enter. Speed steps. Uh, uh, my preference is well, 28. I don't, you know, if I'm going to change to 128, I do it on the controller. Uh, but I program them all to 28. So that's just hit enter. DC m mode enter no. You hit enter. Speed table, uh, standard. I don't use any other speed tables. This is the area, if you're going to try to match locomotives, this is where JMRI Dakota Pro comes into play. I would do all type, all try and attempts to change speed tables in an engine or Dakota through JMRI and Dakota Pro uh, 3. Uh, you play speed match with them and they got a good way to do it but for me it's just standard now here's the one that you got to do a little something different I operate all long addresses so I have to go press 1 I'm not going to press enter I'm going to press 1 then it says set up motor control I haven't ever used this and that goes back 16 years so there it is. At that point, you get to use that famous button on the NCE ProCab controller that says ESC, Escape. So now it goes back to programming track one, two, st uh, standard CVs, regular. And then you're going to go back and hit Escape again. And there's your locomotive. I'm going to reach up here, and if this doesn't work, you'll never see it. Uh, <laughs> and we'll put the engine on. Ah, look, headlights came on. Isn't that neat? And then we'll, oh, uh, and yeah, I can tell it's an old decoder. It's making noise. And now the little engine runs. Isn't that neat? So that, my friends and everybody out there, is just how simple this is what this entire command station is all about. It is user friendly. It's all built in. It'll take you through the steps each time you want to program something. It, you don't have to remember any CVs. You don't have to write them down. If it's an NC decoder and you're working on it or if it's any other decoder to, to, to program it to get it to work that's all you have to do. The only time you have to get into CVs is when you're dealing with um, a Tsunami decoder or um, Broadway Limited's Paragon 2's. If you do have to reset then then you need to go look at what the exact procedure is for a reset. I cannot overemphasize all of the talk about going in and changing CVs that's fine for about 5% of us who know them all. But for all you guys out there just trying to have fun with your trains, this system was designed for one, two, three simple steps. And just let let the, the system and the uh, programs just take you by the hand and lead you through them. And you don't have to remember all the rest of that stuff. So this should hopefully help clear up some repeated posts that I keep seeing about change this CV, do that. If you follow this procedure, I think a lot of your problems will go away. 
and this is Art with the Grande Pacific Model Railroad. Good night.